Swanson versus Ortega. We'll start at the bottom. The first fight is Antonio Pragonetta versus Travin Gills. And to me, Travin looks like he's pretty well-rounded but not great anywhere. I think Antonio Pragonetta is a phenomenal jiu-jitsu guy, and I think that if he can get to, this, to the ground, he should win this. You know, and braganetta has been out for a while. He was injured, but I still feel like he's a really solid up-and-comer. He's got a lot of great wins, and like I said, his grappling is just amazing. I think that Braganetta is going to get this fight to the ground sooner or later and eventually win by submission. Next is Chris Gritzmacher versus Davi Ramos. And to me, Davi is just okay. He's just a decent grappler. I think Chris Gritzmacher is the much better wrestler striker overall. I feel like Chris can just grind, do whatever he wants. I think he can outbox this guy or just out-wrestle him and outpace him. You know, T tire him out and eventually win by TKO, and that's just how I see it. I think Chris Gritz Monster is going to win by KO or TKO with strikes sooner or later. Next is Alejandro Perez versus Yuri Alcantara, and to me, Alejandro Perez, you know, he has a good record in the UFC, but I feel like he just hasn't been super impressive in any single fight. I feel like he just has consistency, like he has no f super glaring flaws, but he doesn't excel anywhere. He's just consistent. I feel like Yuri's the better striker and jujitsu guy overall. I feel like if it's on the feet or on the ground, Yuri should be better. And this is what I think is going to happen. I think Yuri's going to either catch him on the feet or submit him on the ground, just because, like I said, I think he's better overall. And I think it's going to end in the first, maybe second round in favor of Yuri. Next is Frankie Sines versus Murbo. I don't know how to say this guy's name. I honestly call him, yeah, Murbo. Fuck, I can't say this dude's name at all. Um, but either way, I feel like Frankie Signs, even though he's lost three straight, they've been competitive back and forth fights, except for the fight against um, uh, Eddie Wineland. I feel like, you know, he's he won three fights, then he lost three fights. And, you know, he's fought nothing but good people, and I feel like, you know, the guy he's fighting is just a decent striker. He was from Dana White's looking for a fight, but I mean, his record was 6-2 and two going into that, and then he won from a spinning back fist in a fight that was just kind of close. I think Frankie Sainz has just got a huge advantage wrestling-wise, and I think he can keep a higher pace for the three rounds. And I think Frankie Sainz is going to win an easy decision in this fight. Next is Carl Thomas versus Alex Perez. And to me, Carl Thomas is just kind of not that great. I think Alex Perez looked like he's got the better wrestling, striking, and jiu-jitsu. You know, they're both flyweights, and but I just feel like Alex Perez is just one level higher when it comes to everything. So I think he's going to win by decision. Next is Luke Saunders versus Andre Salkuntov. I don't know how to say his name perfectly, but to me, Andre, you know, he, he looks like a good striker from what I've seen in the UFC so far, but his grappling defense isn't that great and his conditioning isn't that great. I think Carl Thomas, or not Carl, but I think Luke Saunders is just going to outpace this guy and beat him up. I think that we saw in the fight with Yuri Alcantara, he was super dominant. He just got caught in a knee bar. That's the thing we saw in his debut, that his, his striking is really good. And his wrestling and his ground and pound and his pace. I think Luke Saunders is just better overall. And I think he's going to outground Andre until he gets tired. And eventually win by TKO or submission with like a rear naked choke. Next is Alex Davis versus Liz Carmouche. And to me, Liz Carmouche, her last two fights, I thought she kind of lost both of them. I feel like she's pretty much done at this point. I think Alex Davis, you know, she's looked much better. I think, you know, aside from that loss from Sarah McMahon... She's looked really good. I still think that she's one of the top chicks, and they're both moving down to 125. But I think Alex Davis is just a better striker and better grappler overall. And I think she's going to win by either a decision or maybe like a late submission in the third. Next is Albert Morales versus uh, Benito Lopez. And I'm going to go with Benito. You know, he's a solid up and comer. Um, I think Albert Morales, we've seen, his record's like 1-1 one, one and or like 1-2-1 one, and one or something like that. I feel like Albert Morales is well-rounded and he's willing to fight, but he just, he's got too many, he's too hittable and his grappling defense has too many holes. I, I'm going to go with Benito. I think he just looks like a good up-and-comer and I think he's going to win by finish. Next is Eric Anders versus Mark Perez. And Mark Perez is undefeated and so is Eric Anders, but Eric Anders has already made his USA debut and we've seen he's got a good takedown defense and really heavy punches. Um, I haven't seen much on Marcos Perez. There's not a lot of tape on him. He's making his debut. And just because of that, I have to go with Anders just because I've seen him fight and I've seen what he can do. So I think he's going to stuff the takedowns and win by KO probably in the first round. Next is Scott Holtzman versus Daryl Horcher. And this fight is going to be super dependent on the wrestling because if Daryl Horcher can stuff those takedowns, I think he'll win this fight because I think his striking is better. But if Scott Holtzman can take him down, I think he'll win because he'll be able to hold him down. 
and I'm leaning more towards Holcher because I've seen him all, all of his UFC fights. You know, he's one and one, but the one loss was to Khabib. His takedown defense is not is really good in my opinion. I feel like you know in his second fight he kind of got taken down the third round and controlled a little bit, but that was because he was tired and he was coming off an injury. I think in this fight he'll be you know closer to his full form, and I think he should be able to stuff the takedowns and just keep the distance and win by decision. So I got Daryl Horcher winning at least two rounds to one, 29-28. Next is Marlon Morales versus Aljamain Sterling and. To me, this fight is pretty simple. I feel like Aljamain Sterling is not a great striker. He just has he does a good job of keeping the distance. I think, you know, Marlon is the much better striker. I think that wrestling-wise, you know, Aljamain's probably got a little bit of an advantage, but his biggest weakness is he's not very great at grappling off his back. We saw it against Henan Burrell. We saw it against, um, you know, Augusto Mendez. And we saw it against uh, Brian Caraway. When he's on top, he's phenomenally good, but when he's on his back... He really isn't that amazing. And to me, Marlon Morales, I feel like he can fight on top or on bottom. I would say that if Aljamain gets on top, he'll probably he, Marlon will have a hard time getting back up. But vice versa, if Marlon takes him down, I don't think he'll be able to get up at all. And that's why I feel I feel like Marlon should be able to you know edge out the rounds. And I think it'll be a close fight, but I feel like his better striking and his better overall grappling is going to get him this one. So I've got Marlon Morales winning by either a, a, a solid decision or a close split decision. I got Marlon Morales winning. Next is Jason Knight versus Gabriel Benitez. And to me, these guys are the same, but Jason Knight's just better everywhere. They're both good strikers who like to submit guys on the ground. But like I said, I just feel like Jason Knight's the better striker, better jiu-jitsu guy. And I feel like sooner or later, Knight's either going to win by knockout or win by submission. It's just a matter of time. So I'm going to go with Knight by finish, either in the first or second round. Finally, we got Cub Swanson versus Brian Ortega, and to me, if Brian Ortega had better wrestling, I would pick him in a heartbeat, but I don't think he's going to be able to take Cub to the ground, and I don't think Cub's going to go to the ground with him unless he's positive he's about to knock him out. And if this fight is just a straight boxing match, I think Cub's got a huge advantage in terms of, I would say they're probably about even in terms of overall skill. Cub might be a little bit higher, maybe a level or two. But the power difference is huge. I think Cub has a huge advantage in terms of the punching power. And like I said, I don't see Brian Ortega being able to force him to the ground. Cub's got really good takedown defense. And, you know, he, he Cub's biggest thing is that he's not great at getting back up. But I would say his defensive submission game is really good. I mean, the times he's been submitted in the octagon are times where he's exhausted or hurt really bad. He's never just been straight up submitted when he's, like, you know, not injured. I feel like the only time was when Ricardo Lamas did it, and that was because he wasn't paying attention and was just being too wild on the ground. As long as he's consistent with his ground game, if it does go to the ground, I think he, should, he can survive with Ortega. And if this is just a straight boxing match, which I think it's going to be for 90% of the fight, I think that Cub is going to be the better striker, the more powerful striker. And sooner or later, I think that they're both probably going to be landing about the same amount of punches, but he's going to be doing more damage, and eventually Cub's just going to win by KO. So that's what I got. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.